Today, we'll be talking about the life of a preacher's kid, the life of a PK. So, preacher's kid is like a commonly used term. Everybody knows there's the movies, there's the song, there's everything. But um, I feel like today, we want to get like your opinion. You know how they say POV. So, this is like POV. You're a preacher's kid. What is it about? So, I was expecting a lot of tea because I've never like been close to a pastor's kid like I've never actually heard them complain or like whatever. I've never heard them really talk about it. See, I want to know what it's like. I want to know everything. I want to know what like waking up to pray for other people is like. I want to know what are their complaints. And because me, like my parents are, okay, yeah, morning devotion, night devotion, go to church on Sunday. But that's it. Like we don't have to go the extra mile. So I want to see like what it's like for them. And you know the way everybody expects pastor's kids to always be perfect. I want to know what that um expectation what he meant for them growing up as a pastor's child um people will expect that i would you know be the best at everything be the excellent person you know in children's church they'll be because my dad is the pastor they'll expect that i'm the one also leading the children in church and i usually felt that that was not i mean if there was another person that was supposed to be a natural leader allow the person be a natural leader why me all those things were not fun you know and if you go to school People will watch at you and say, are you not a pastor's child? I'm not supposed to be this. All those parts weren't fun. I wish we could reorientate people to tell them that being a pastor's child does not mean that you are the Holy Spirit. You are human and you are a child. You should behave as a child should behave, right? And then if I'm wrong, just correct me. Don't correct me because I'm a pastor's child. Correct me because I am wrong and I should be doing the right things, even as a normal human being. Then I didn't used to like it. I mean... But now I think I understand it better. Mm -hmm. um, I understand why there were so much expectations back then and like the heap of it and stuff like that. I think that they could have done it better, like past the expectations better. Like they were, they, they were supposed to be like balance. But now that I've grown up by myself, I've brought the balance by myself. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, now I do things the way I want because I understand it, not because the way I was told. To do it and i think that's what was happening when i was younger oh you're a pastor's child you have to be this way you have to be that way but now that i'm saying no exactly i don't have to be that way i understand what you're saying and i can do what you're saying but i will do it my own way so uh, i think that's why i am enjoying it now or i like it now yeah. so what's the bad what's the only one of the the bad yeah let me say this very funny one when i was growing up as a pastor's child i didn't like visitors coming around because <laughs> They would take my meat, you know. <laughs> we could have done. We, we don't. Personal meat. I mean, every, they were done cooking. They've shared food for everyone, and then you, you are coming to visit us for what visit? And then I'm the last born, so oh. of course I'm the go to person. Yeah, yeah. Drink your meat. So what I started doing over time was that when they give me food first, I ate my meat first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I started doing that. When I get to church on Sunday, I'm like, why did you come to our house that day? <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I mean. That's very funny. But one of the bad for me, and I was talking about balance the other time, is that um, my parents traveled a lot because they were pastors. So I was technically raised by my siblings. That's me, right? I had, I'm the last born and I have way older siblings. I was born in the thick of my parents' ministry, you know, not at their, not at their beginning stage. So they were already like established pastors and they were moving them around states in, in the country. The only time I had to move with them to Anambra State, I lived in Anambra State for four years. So I finished my primary school there. I started my secondary school there and that kind of thing before I moved back to Lagos and things like that. So the, the, that kind of disconnect was there with my parents. I didn't used to like my dad then because, I mean, you person you not even used to see you will not even get to know what you want to even like about him you just know that okay he's a, he's a good guy i mean for him to be a pastor he's a good guy to be honest because people saw him as a leader people will go to him and he will give them advice he will solve their solve their problems think ah, you must be a good person so i knew i knew that but it took a while for me to know that good person for myself so back then i mean it was just a, so that's just one of the the sides of it. My experience being a pastor's child was very, very interesting. Um, mine was going to church almost every time. 
and been in church from the start of day to the end of day. And my life was literally built around church activities. It was large, largely very, very peaceful. That's what I'll use. Because, you know, in the presence of God, everything is at peace. <laughs> so that's, that's how I would define it. Being a pastor's kid makes you love God more. Trust me. Yes. Because you experience him in the truest form. Now, yes, because you are receiving directly from somebody that is talking to him. So you are you understand you understand god better and because you are a pastor's kid you understand that your pastor is also human is your dad so you see he make mistakes but you understand that those mistakes don't reduce him does not reduce his anointing and does not make him less of a christian or less of someone that loves god or has god in him so that's like the major advantage of being a pastor's kid. The major disadvantage is time. Like he said, we are first to get to church, we are last to leave. It was frustrating, trust me. Very, very frustrating. We are at church by 6.30 a.m. in the morning. We'll finish first service. We'll finish second service. We'll finish workers' meeting. We we'll still go for home fellowship. It was exhausting. Sometimes I felt like, like, I'm tired. You still get to move before you sleep. We we'll still do evening devotion. By three a.m., all of a sudden, your church member something. Your parents will not pray alone. They also come and call you to come and pray for somebody that is in their own yeah. house. So it was very very tired at the time. Another thing is that your entire life is planned around the church, planned around church programs. So, you may miss Champions League because you See, went for they do this one. See, they do this guy. You <laughs> may... <laughs> it was annoying. When Trust you were young, me. many things were you thinking about? Those were the things <sighs> that were... It was important to me. Champions League was important to me. I was missing it because of digging deep. Why? <laughs> like, why can't I miss digging deep once in a while? But mm. no, you must go for digging deep. You must go for all of the services. So that that was like the major disadvantage. You see, I feel like these people are hiding the tea. I feel like they're very secretive. So I can't really tell because I feel like they've given me just half information. But um, some of the things they mentioned, like um, when I was younger, I I used to read, love reading Bible stories and all that. So I imagine if a pastor was telling it, I, I would have liked it even more. So I guess that if, but then at the same time, I needed a lot of attention, so I can't tell. I think I think I've had maybe not pastors, not not too many pastors' kids as friends, but I've had people who their parents were in position of power and stuff. And I think even as as a pastor, you're in a position of power, you're in a position where you're in charge of people, and sometimes it's easy to neglect what's back home. Because you're so engrossed with what's going on in church. Oh, the, we have this event, we have that, we need to raise this amount, we need to do that. And then you forget what's going on. And I think it's why in pop culture, people tend to say, oh, pastors, kids are whatever, whatever. Most of it isn't true anyway. But yeah, it's easy for you to get, you know, in that space where you don't really look back at home and like, you know, what's going on at home. You don't have time for your children, basically, to raise them. And then they are raised by different people. And if you're lucky, they're raised by the right people. If you're not... It could be raised by the streets. So, yeah. One of the challenging things about being a pastor's child is that you are always up for any program at any point in time. Like, if there's a video, you do video. You do video in church, you do video at home. You pray in church, you pray at home. Um, when you go to church, there's no return. On Sundays, there's no return time. In fact, funny thing is that now, now as an adult, when I go to church, I don't even return home early. <laughs> so it has now become like that. So, I mean, I feel like that was really stressful and challenging. The other part is that you were praying for people you don't know. You are hearing people's gist that, that absolutely had no business hearing. I enjoyed almost all the time in church settings. You come late, you don't come late, you sit in front. They will share when they are sharing things, they will keep your own. 
all those small small benefits i enjoyed it a lot we're always treated special in, in church settings ah pastor children yeah, ah. so that that's what i enjoyed most but also being like the fellowship also was something i enjoyed enjoyed also first of all there are several places that being a pastor shall have been really helpful number one because my my dad was actually a good guy you know understand so when i get to like places and where they know my dad and i needed stuff people were like ah daddy i need this thing and i'm like oh ah, yes i'm like oh come come to the front of the line you know let me help you and things like that i mean there are things like that but me generally spiritually like i said um it gave me like an head start in life in my spiritual life when i actually became born again so it gave me that kind of rest that in in my place of work i learned how to pray before i know i start doing work you know that kind of thing you know things that were taught uh, i was taught as a child because you know my dad was a pastor and all those things like devotion morning devotion is actually really hard to be honest to wake up in the morning and come and say you want devotion more I learned all those things as a, as a pastor's child, so it became less difficult, not easier. It became less difficult to do and to adopt. So <laughs> I, I I used to be team's president in okay. the team, and then I started this program in like 2017, 2018. It was called the Expression. Expression. Yeah, we had like over a thousand teenagers attend the event. I, I like I was in Redeem Camp then, and then. Where at there was one program then National Young Leader, Leaders Retreat NYLR, mm. and then we're just there and people were praying and then I heard a voice in my head. <laughs> it was very funny that day because before then I'm a preacher's kid, but I had never really, 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 really explored, explored or experienced the Holy Spirit. But that it was funny because I was hearing something in my head. I would say it out. My guy was hearing a Bible verse and he would open the Bible verse and it was what I was saying from my mouth and he was just hearing the Bible verse separately. Mm. Bro, I was astonished that day. And what I heard then was that my own journey was different from my dad's journey. Mm. My dad's journey was to stand on the pulpit, preach to young people. Mine was to go into the darkness with the light. That's mine. My only to go to the unconventional spaces where other Christians might may not go into. Mm. And I spread lights there. Mm. So that's what bettered the expression. Mm. We had the fashion show, all of those things. And we're reaching out to, we had over a thousand teenagers in attendance. And like we're using music to mm. to that's reach true. out to these people. Unfortunately, we didn't continue it after like two years, three years. Uh, that's where I met yeah. Mustafa too. Yeah. yeah. So Mustafa was was one that covered the program that year. But that's what I've continued with this 66 because I know that there's a gap that needs to be filled mm. with proper content. Is... Content that does not segregate. Mm. Content that does not segregate. Content that everybody can listen to and learn from and receive the light from. So that is my own purpose. That's your ministry. Yeah. Once you are born again, you are called to do... You are cre- In fact, not even born again. You are created for a purpose. Yes. So once you are in working in purpose... Your purpose divides into two things, your ministry and your mission. So your ministry is what you do for God in the church. Your mission is what you do for God in the world at large. Mm. So like your work, your, for example, now, if I've been sent to build, let's just say I'm giving a, 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 a third phrase, like that's my purpose to build. In the church, I could be building people, helping, like, I mean, the teens ministry. I'm building children, teenagers and all those things to become what they need to be. That's a ministry. In the mission, I could build in organizations. Mm. Do you understand? I could be helping businesses raise, do strategy for them and all those things and growing businesses. I'm doing both. Yeah. Ministry and mission. Mm. So don't, we, we cloud everything together and say, ministry, I don't want to do. I only want to face the world. Mission. But it's both. It's both. Some people are now called into full time ministry. ministry. There's that yeah, one. That's separate. That means their mission, their ministry, everything is Since there. The church. Some of us are not. Some of us are called to do one part here, one part here, but both of them fit together to form our purpose. So that's the distinction that pastors' children need to make. Hmm. For example, hmm. in the church now, my parents used to hammer on this thing that, oh, ministry, this thing. But when they saw that, I'm in the media ministry in church as well, right? So I, I do social, digital media for hmm. church and stuff. And at a point, I was, 
I was growing to a stage where they drafted me into Pastor Deboe's media media team. And then that was when my parents now realized that you might be doing something here. Yeah, do you understand? Mm. So to them, they felt comfortable with that. Oh, this is now a ministry. Mm. This is now, I'm ministering to people by what I do. Not necessarily by me standing on the pulpit to preach. Mm. It's just one thing. My my head of unit used to say something that when we do a flyer for like oligo services and things like that, and somebody sees it on social media and comes, and then that Dijo does like a altar call, mm-hmm. and person comes to give his life to Christ. Mm-hmm. We are shareholders in that person that came to give his life exactly. to Christ. Exactly. Yeah. Because without right. my flyer, that person would not have come. Mm-hmm. My advice to a pastor's child is that don't, I mean, ignore like the pressures and all those things, and just do, you, if, you, if you are a child that you, like you're a child, be a child. Like, just enjoy yourself. Enjoy the time. If Play when you need to play. And I know that uh, they were strict with me growing up and everything. So, yeah, it was, now I understand it, but I feel like there should have been a balance. So I would tell the, the a younger me now that they are telling you the good thing, but you don't have to exactly do it like that. Just be, just be correct. Just try your best to ensure that you are not doing the wrong thing. <laughs> don't allow people pressure you. Just be yourself. Know that Jesus loves you and you are more than a pastor's child. Find yourself and express yourself. That's what I'll say. So this has been a very stimulating conversation, very interesting conversation. And I think one thing that stood out for me is how each person in some way has kind of said that PKs should keep showing up. Even in like even at points where they don't fully understand the message, they don't they haven't completely found their mission or their uh, ministry. Yeah, true. They should keep showing up. They should yeah. like. Yeah. I know it gets tiring and all that, but at the end of it, you're going to look back someday. I'm like, oh yes, my parents were absolutely right about this. I, if I come back, I have to be a pastor child again. My dad is my mentor. I say it everywhere. Is is the perfect example anybody can have so yeah i if i come back i want to be pastor's child again